Hello everyone, I'm back. Um, before I read chapter 5 today, I just want to say, I believe I referenced in my chapter 1 video that I had another crossover of Hatalia and Aoni, but it didn't get that far. I remember actually what it was about and I still have it on my um, flash drive. So basically in this crossover, like it wasn't going to be connected to this story and it would take and the char the main characters would be Hungary and Romania and basically in this human AU like they're both sick and tired of their lives they have like horrible lives so they decide to go to a man this mansion that's rumored to hold like um great wealth so that they can get out of their situations but they end up getting trapped in there i don't know if I'll ever like continue on writing it or even publish it I don't know but if you guys are interested I could pick that project back up but anyway let's get started with reading Jacob entered the third floor with his flashlight emitting a dim glow he foraged around for students in the house but had found no one the house was already as big as it was, and he thought about the possibility of unknowingly passing by them, but he had to move on. The monsters of the second floor were just antagonizing him, and he could hardly take it any, any longer. Jacob went down the right hallway and entered the first room. It was a simple bedroom, just like so many of the other bedrooms. While looking around, he could not help but hear voices. At first, Jacob thought they were just voices in his head, but they seemed to get closer. He turned around just as the door opened. Oh, Aliska, Erica, Elisabetta, Jacob said, having a bit of a dark tone when he mentioned the last name. I did not know you were here. There you are, you idiot. I told you not to come here by yourself. Aliska continued to chastise Jacob about going off by himself to the mansion. Erica glanced around the room and then looked back at Jacob. So, where are the others? I don't know, but Svetin and Andre are definitely here. I found Svetin's student identification card. Uh, we know that, Aliska answered. You do? They were trying to get go through some secret passageway in the wall leading to another room. They got their exits cut off by two monsters and could have died if we had not been nearby. That is so scary. Have you been assailed by the demons here? Erica asked. Almost. I hid in a closet before it entered the room. These monsters are not going to give us any mercy. Take a look at this. Aliska handed Jacob the video camera and she played all the videos on it. Jacob's face paled in fear at each video. After watching all of them, he looked as if he had seen a ghost. We need to find the others, and fast. Jacob said, his voice shaking. We are trying the best we can, Erica replied. We can't just disperse like some horror movie since it will make us easy targets. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's go. The small group left the room to explore the rest of the third the third floor, unaware that someone had been eavesdropping on their conversation. This mansion seems to get more augmented the more we explore it, Andre commented. Which just means it will be harder to extricate ourselves from this place. Svetin and Andre wandered around the secret level with almost no luck of finding anything. Almost all the rooms seemed the same with no alteration. Though something Andre had noticed was that the floor seemed to be much weaker than the f other floors. Are you sure we should not just leave? The floor feels very weak, like it's going to break at any moment. I guess you are right, Svetin replied. Do you remember where we came in at? I think so. Andre led the way back, even though his sense of direction was going in and out due to being so tired. The path he was showing was just a conjecture, and he had no idea whether it would actually lead back or not. Eventually, the pair ended up at a hallway not passed before. Svetin took notice of how they had not passed by this particular hallway and stopped Andre. Andre, you really don't know where you are going, do you? To be honest, I lost track, Andre replied apathetically. We might as well turn around. Andre turned around and noticed a giant hole in the floor. There was no way to cross over the other side of the hallway unless one had the guts to jump over. They did not know how far down the hole drop. I guess you are right. Before they could leave the hallway, heavy footsteps were heard. A monster blocked off their only exit. I guess this is just our luck, Andre commented. We only have one other thing to do. Svetin and Andre turned toward the gaping hole. If you make it over and I'm barely able to, you won't let me fall, will you? Andre questioned. I won't. You wouldn't let me fall, would you? Never would I ever. 
Both boys jumped over. They were just adhering to the old wood floor as they tried to climb up. Sveten was the first to climb up and immediately helped Andre up. Once they were both safe, they watched the demon let out an angered roar before doing something unthinkable. It charged at the hole. Go! Go! Sveten urged. The duo ran as quick as they could until they reached a dead end. However, the ceiling above them seemed broken and it almost seemed possible to get through it. They were not tall enough to reach the hole by themselves, but if one of them got out on the other's so Fuck me. On another's shoulders, they could make it through. Andre, get on my shoulders and reach the third floor, Sveten ordered. Andre had no time to object since the beast was close by. He got on Sveten's shoulders and quickly broke through the floor and climbed through. He tried to reach down and grab Sveten's arm, but he could not reach it. He looked around wildly for something to use when he found a blanket on the bed nearby. He grabbed it and let Sveten grab onto it. Both him and the both of them worked to cover the hole with the bed. After everything had been done, Sveten and Andre found themselves leaning against the door, gasping for air. The sheer exertion that had to be put into such a short amount of time had worn them out. I have to admire your dexterity for the situation we were in, Sveten said. You know what I said when it came to leaving you for dead. Never would I ever. Sveten stood up and Andre followed with him. Their tired senses seemed to be clarified after having a near-death experience. We have to keep going. The sooner we find an exit, the better. Gilbert wandered around the basement with discretion, trying not to be seen or heard by any monsters. His light from his flashlight was slowly fading out, and he soon would be surrounded by, ex by an exuberant amount of darkness. He had walks walked by so many rooms and noticed so many safes hidden away. Gilbert assumed that the safes were filled with money or other valuable objects. The family that that lived here must have been of a very certain proud, Gilbert thought. Usually Gilbert would have been defiant toward such enemies trying to kill him, but something about the current environments and inhabitants filled him with so much fear that he could only run away. The silence of the basement made Gilbert so nervous. He felt like anything could pop out and try to kill him. Then again, he would have to hear for heavy footsteps. Gilbert thought that perhaps he could try to make his way back and he could explore the second floor that that he saw when he first entered. Surely there had to be other students exploring that floor. He had heard rumors about students thinking about going to the mansion through school. Of course he assumed that they were on the second floor unless they decided not to come or were dead. The overall feeling of the mansion was a feeling that no one wanted and it emulated in their own houses. It was a mix of sorrow and nail-biting suspense. Yet Gilbert kept blindly going down each hallway, not sure if he would ever find an exit in this never-ending maze. He took a break to rest his aching legs and thought about sitting down when he felt the icy cold hands of someone grabbing his shoulders. It did not feel like a monster grabbing him, but more like a human. So, a lost soul has diverged from the others. And that is for chapter 5. Thank you so much for listening. And I will see you guys next time for chapter 6. See you guys later.